Welcome to Process to Profitability, a podcast all about the tools and strategies you need to serve your clients and grow your small business, hosted by me, Samantha Mabe of Lemon and the Sea. Join me as I chat with creative entrepreneurs and small business owners about how they built and grew their businesses and how you can do the same in a way that fits you. Let's get started. You are listening to the very first bonus episode in the Designing a Strategic Website series. Today, we're going to be talking about designing a strategic navigation. And as you listen to this episode, you may notice that it was done a little bit differently. I actually recorded all of the next six episodes on Facebook Live and then released them on the podcast. So if you hear me talk about Facebook, that's why. But this information is going to be really important as you design your website. Tune in for the next six weeks to learn all about designing a strategic website. We're talking about different parts of your website and different pages, and I know that it's going to be super helpful. Today's episode, like I said, is about designing a strategic navigation, and we're going to be talking about choosing the right links for your main navigation, strategically leading visitors through your website, designing a footer that keeps people on your website longer, and uses for a sidebar and what you should include and what to leave out. Make sure you tune into this episode and then follow the action steps at the end so that you can really start to build your own strategic website. Okay, so like I said, we are recording every week for the next six weeks about designing a strategic website and I have chosen six different pieces of your website that you can really work on to get the strategy down and get people to move through your website the way that you want. We talk about this a lot on the podcast and I decided that it was time to take that a step further. I wanted to give you guys some really practical advice for the different pages of your website that you're going to see and how you can be strategic with those. Um, Specifically, instead of this big overarching idea of you need a strategy on your website. So today we're talking about designing a strategic navigation. And the reason that I wanted to start with this was because even though your navigation is not technically a page of your website, it is a big part of it. And the way that you design your navigation is going to determine how people move through your site. And so it's really important. And it's something that people struggle with. And I have worked with clients on this. I have seen a lot of people get a little bit confused over what their navigation is actually supposed to entail, how much stuff they're supposed to have there. And I didn't want that to be the case for you guys. I wanted to give you the same advice that I give to my clients so that you can understand what it is when we talk about strategic navigation and how you can figure out what you actually need on your website. And so we're going to be talking about um, a couple of different things. We're going to talk about your main menu, navigation within your website. We're going to talk about your footer, and then we're going to talk about your sidebar in your blog. And so the reason that I wanted to do it this way is because navigation is more than just the links in your main menu. That is really important, but there's navigation everywhere in your website. Anytime you're linking to something, you're leading people through your site. And so today we're going to start with the main menu. And my biggest tip here is to limit the number of links in your main navigation to seven. If you can get it lower than that, that's great but seven is really the most that you want to have here because if you have more than that, people are going to be really overwhelmed with things and they're not gonna know what to click on. So a standard main navigation is going to have a link to your homepage. Sometimes that is a separate link and sometimes it just is clicking on your logo. It's going to have a link to your about page, your services, your blog or some other way that you create content and your contact page. And those are the pages that we're actually going to cover in the next five episodes where we're talking about strategic design, but a lot of people want to throw everything that they can into the main menu because they think that if people can see all of the things they have to offer, they're going to be better off because they're going to be interested in checking them out. But what I have found is that when there is too much stuff in your main navigation, people get really overwhelmed. And so you want to limit it to seven 
things. And that includes if you're linking to your social media or having a button for your opt-in, like seven things. The second tip here is to use standard language or keywords so that people know what to expect when they click a link. A lot of us like to have branded words like my notebook or my journal, but really it's more helpful to say blog because people know what a blog is. And if they're landing on your website for the first time, they're not going to know what those cutesy language things are. And while it's tempting to do that because it's on brand, it doesn't really tell your audience who are coming to your website, and it doesn't tell Google what it is that they're looking for. So stick to the standard names of things. That's really going to help you. You can go into more detail sometimes with your SEO in page descriptions, and that's great, but keep those link names pretty simple. The third tip is to avoid drop-down menus when possible. So I have seen a lot of websites have the um, sort of hamburger menu over on the side, and then it will drop down with a whole bunch of links so that they can fit all of that stuff there. But Google can't read those. They can only read what's actually like written out in words on your website regularly. So if you want to have a drop down menu, you need to have a regular navigation too, and then have it sort of as a more section. The other thing about drop down menus is that visitors can skip important pages if they're in drop down menus. So we tend to just skim through things really, really quickly. And so we don't necessarily look at all of those options in the drop down menu unless we're looking for something really specific. So if somebody comes to your website, they're just there for the first time and you have a drop down menu where you have um, a whole bunch of different things on your services page, they might not look at all of that because they're not really uh, going to take the time to figure out what it is. So. My tip is if you want to have a drop down menu, like I have um, one on my website for my services so that it's actually about my services and then my portfolio, make sure that that top one that you click on to link, if they click on that actually goes to that main page. So for me, the way that this works is when somebody clicks on my services link, it will take them to the services page, but if they just hover over it, they'll see the drop down menu with services and my portfolio. And that's a great way to do it because they're always going to be getting somewhere, but you want to make sure you're linking to those other pages within pages because they could skip over them in the main menu. If you need a drop down menu, make it large. So on Squarespace, this is pretty complicated, but on other websites, you can do this a little bit easier. If you need a drop down menu, make it take up a lot of space so that visitors stop. Their eyes actually stop because it's something that's different, it's got a lot of information, and they take the time to look at this. You can see this a lot when you go to retail websites, so something like Target or Apple, when you scroll over their drop down menu, they have all of the different categories and the subcategories, and that makes you stop and take the time to look at what it is you actually want to find. My next tip is to order your navigation in the way that somebody moves through your website. So when somebody lands on your website, they typically go home, they land on your homepage, then they want to learn about you, so your about page, they go to your services, they go to your blog, and then they contact you. It doesn't always go exactly in that order, but that's a pretty standard way of doing things because your homepage is going to give them an overview of who you are and what you do, then they're going to learn more about you and why they should trust you. Maybe they want to check out your services. And then with your blog, a lot of people don't go to that like second to last, but it's a really standard place to put it because that's where the content is. And so it's a really content heavy page. If you put it earlier on, people can get lost there and never see the rest of the pages. And then the last thing is usually going to be your contact page because that is for a lot of us, the ultimate goal of our website is to get people to reach out about hiring us. You can also throw your shop in there if you want to around the services page. You also want to click or you also want to keep your navigation clean. So remove items that are rarely clicked if they aren't critical. If you see that nobody is clicking on a certain link and it's not um, one of those most important pages, take it off, put it somewhere else. If they 
are rarely clicked, but they are important, try renaming it or putting it in a different place so that people will um, maybe click on it more and go there. So you're just testing and changing. And if certain pages are being clicked all the time, they're the most popular, move them to the beginning so that everybody is getting to that section of your website. And of course, you want to optimize your navigation for mobile. So the hamburger menu is standard. It's those three lines. Um, that's what's standard on mobile. And most templates have that set up so that when you click that, everybody knows that it's going to then bring out a menu for them. But you want to make sure that it's set up because if it looks just like a regular menu, only shrunken down, it's going to be really, really hard for people to navigate. All right, so we've talked about the main menu. Um, there's a lot in there, and for just seven links, there's a lot to think about, but once you have an idea of how that works, you're going to really improve the journey through your website because you're going to have all of the links you need, and you're not going to have stuff that you don't. The next thing I wanted to talk about was navigation within your website. So this is when somebody is on a page of your website and they're navigating to a different page or off of your website, how do you set that up? And this is really where a lot of the strategy in navigation comes in because we have talked about previously, we want our website to work as a journey. They land on one page, they get all of the information they need along the path, and then they take that action that we want them to take at the end. So how do we do this? First thing is to have a call to action at the end of each page or blog post to direct visitors to the next step. I've talked about this before on the podcast, I've talked about it in opt-ins, and I'm sure you've heard this advice before, but make sure you're actually doing it. Have a call to action, one of them, at the end of every page that leads them to the next step that makes sense. So a lot of times you have to be strategic about how this works, but for example, if you have a services page, you may want to direct people either to contact you or to your portfolio, depending on if they need to see your work before they decide to hire you. At the end of your portfolio pages, you should always link to um, your contact page or your services so that they can take that next step that makes sense. You want to guide people through your website because otherwise they're not going to know where to go. You want to make it as easy as possible for them. The next thing you can do is to make popular options like blog categories really easy to find. So if you know that everybody is coming to your website and they want to read your personal posts about your family and your children, that's awesome. Make it easy for them to find it because even though they might, you know, get lost in there for a little bit and not get in touch with you, it's going to keep them coming back. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can have a specific page for posts on your main topics or you can include links on your homepage. So a lot of us have links on our homepage that say, you know, our most popular posts or check out my posts in these categories. You can also have a specific page for each of those categories and that really helps for SEO as well. So, and then link to it so that people can just check out what it is you're talking about in those topics. The next thing you can do is to include a search bar. So people are going to want to search your website, especially now I have found that more and more people are searching websites because they don't have the patience to find something. And if you have got a lot of blog content, they're going to want to search so that they can find the answers they're looking for really quickly. They're coming to you because they know that you are an expert at something and what they want to do is then find an answer to their question so that they don't have to go to somebody else or just search in the regular Google world. So include a search bar. Um, some people will put it in their main navigation. Some people will put it near the footer of their website. I like to have one in the blog sidebar that we're going to talk about later, but make sure you have one that's pretty easy for people to find. And then put the items you want to be known for in the most visited locations. So if you have a lot of posts about something that you no longer offer a service for, just make sure that it's not front and center on your website. 
Instead, focus on the things that you want to be known for, that you're an expert in, and put those in the most important locations so that people see it over and over again and they go check that information out. The next thing for navigation is when you mention one page or post on another page, link to it. This one's pretty simple, but if you are mentioning that you wrote a blog post on something, make sure that you link to it. This helps search engines see how your website works and how everything is to get works together. So when a search engine comes to your website with the little bots, what they'll do is they'll scan a page and then they'll follow all of the links within that page. So if you link to a certain blog post, it's going to say, okay, well, I need to go check out this one. And then it'll sort of crawl it from there like a spider web. Um, but if you never link to anything, it's not really going to get off of that page. The other piece of this is that it makes it easy for visitors to see other pages that they're interested in. I don't know how many times I have gone to a blog and they, I will read the blog post and I will see links to other posts that sound really interesting. So I will right click and I'll open that in a new window and then I'll just go to that next post and I'll do the same thing. And so I'm not going to just read one thing. I'm going to get a lot of information and every time I see something I'm interested in and they link to it, I like to go and check those out too. My final tip for navigation within your website, and this is specifically blog related, is to include a list of related posts at the bottom of your blog posts for visitors who don't want to opt in or take another action. So I really recommend that at the bottom of every blog post, you have a way to opt in that makes sense for that post, uh, something that's relevant to the topic that you're talking about but not everybody is gonna to wanna to do that. Or they may have already done it and so they are just coming to your blog to get more information or learn more about you. So what you wanna do here is give them some options of related posts that are similar in topic to what they just read and direct them to those. In Squarespace, this is super easy to set up. If you have categories or tags on your blog, you just use a summary block, you put it there, you tell it which category or tag, and then it will automatically update every time you post a new post in that section. So it's really easy to keep those going, you just have to get started with it. The next section of navigation for your website is your footer. Now, I know that a lot of people really overlook this, but there is so much you can do with a footer and it's a great place to promote important links and actions. So you want to use it really strategically. It doesn't make sense to have this whole section of your website that you're not using in a way that makes sense because if somebody scrolls all the way down your website to your footer, because and, and a lot of us have really long pages, especially our blogs, so if they scroll all the way down and they get to the bottom, they are really interested in what you do and who you are. So you want to give them a way to connect and take action on something. So once you know your main goal of your website, and we've talked about this in previous episodes as well, but you choose your main goal for your website and in the footer include a call to action that supports it. So for a lot of us, this is we want more people on our email list. So create a section in your footer that gets people to sign up for your email list right there. Make it really easy. Name, email, submit. You can also include some other important items. So this is a great place for a search bar. It's a great place for social media links, um, for some extra navigation. So my main menu has those things that we talked about earlier, but my footer has links to my privacy policy, my blog posts, my archives, my... Uh, a couple of different things that I don't have in the main menu, but that are still important and that a lot of people still look for. And so I've included those in my footer. And then, as I just mentioned, you want to make sure you have a link to your privacy policy. I haven't talked about the GDPR too much on this podcast, so um, you can go check that out in a couple of different places. But we all need privacy policies on our website, and this is something that I push really hard with a lot of my clients. Um, so just put a link to that in your footer. It's a standard place to have it, uh, and so a lot of people know to look for it there. And then the final way that we navigate through websites is with our sidebar. Now, this is for blogs, but not all blogs need a sidebar. 
Um, if you have a website that has all of that type of information somewhere else, you can probably skip it. But if you have a large or very popular blog, or if your blog is your main part of your website, it can be helpful for visitors to have a sidebar with some information. So you want to make sure that you include a headshot and a bio, just something really short about you and a picture of your face. Include a search bar so that people can find other posts pretty easily. Link to popular posts or categories so that people can explore pretty easily. And then have something that supports your main website goal. So link to the email list, sign up, or a freebie, one thing there. There are some things that you want to leave out of a sidebar, though. So you don't want to include things like high-priced services or products. People who just came to read your blog are not ready to buy those things. You also do not need to include your blog post archives by date. No one is going to go through and look at them by date. They want to look at the categories. And we are now in an age where ads really don't make sense for most of us. So you don't need ads in your sidebar if you are selling services or products of your own because you don't want to take people away from your website. I know this is a lot of information. This was probably my longest Facebook Live and I am going to be sharing it on the podcast as well. So what I want you guys to do is take three action steps after you listen to this episode. Number one is to update your main navigation with standard link names. If you have some of those fluffy link names, change them to something that is really standard and people are gonna know what it is. Number two is remove any links that you don't need in your main navigation. Keep it to seven. If you can get smaller than seven, that's great, but make sure that you don't have too much stuff up there. And number three is to take advantage of your footer by adding any of the important links that you had to remove from your main navigation or that people are really interested in. So those are the three action steps. And I really encourage you to just check out your website, see how your website navigation is working, if it's strategic, if it's moving visitors through your site, and make sure you tune in next week when we are going to be talking about designing a strategic homepage. So this is one of the hardest pages for a lot of people to design because there's a lot of information we want to show. But if you tune in next week, I'm going to be going through how I design homepages and how you can make sure that yours is strategic. Thanks for listening to Process to Profitability. Please take a minute to leave an honest review in iTunes so that I can help more small business owners and creative entrepreneurs find the show. 